Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the native device clipboard using React Native as your uh, mobile application framework. So I've, I've also done a similar tutorial using Ionic Framework which is um, another mobile uh, framework. So this one will be in React Native. So uh, it's important to note that for this tutorial uh, we will be using an external component. So the clipboard functionality is not bundled with React Native like you might have seen in some of my other tutorials. So like with all my tutorials, let's go ahead and start by creating a fresh uh, React Native project. Alright, that'll just take a moment to finish. Perfect. So let's go ahead and clear the terminal. Uh, next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and download the uh, latest uh, React Native Clipboard plugin. And that could be done by first navigating with your terminal into our React project and saying npm install React Native Clipboard. And then doing hyphen hyphen save. That'll save it to our project. All right, that was quick. Uh, so it's downloaded and now in our project directory, but it's not added to Xcode yet. So in order to add it to Xcode, what we want to do is we want to open up the React project and open up Xcode. So if you click on the project tree on the left, let's go ahead and allow that. If you click on it on the left and then you right click on libraries and say add files to React project, now you can go ahead and first start with your React project on your desktop and then go to Node Modules, React Native Clipboard and then click, click on RN Clipboard Xcode Project and click Add. So that's part one of two that's been added. The second part that we have to do is we have to click the Build Phases tab up at the top of Xcode and then we want to click Link Binary with Libraries and then click the plus button. It should already find librnclipboard.a. This is what you want to add. So go ahead and add it. All right, it's now been added to Xcode. So at this point in time, the clipboard is now able to be used in our project. So go back into your text editor. And let's go ahead and open up the project, index.ios.js. Let's go ahead and include it into our JavaScript here. All right, with that added, now what we can do is we can say, um, well, first, before we start doing anything, let's, let's talk about what we're going to be doing. We're actually going to create a very static list, a list view in uh, React Native. And then when the user long presses or, or long clicks any list item, it's going to copy that list item to the clipboard and it's immediately going to paste it to the logs uh, so that way you know that it's working. So with that said, uh, let's start by uh, adding list view as one of our options here. We also want to add touchable highlight for clicking and that should be enough. So let's jump straight to the UI here. We're actually going to have two, two render functions, one for rendering the list row and one for rendering the list itself. So starting with the first render, we're going to go ahead and remove what's there. We're going to say list view. We're going to say data source equals this.state.data source. Uh, we're going to create that state in a moment. So right now it's it's just going to be undefined. We're going to say render row equals this dot render row. This is the second render function that I was talking about. And we're also going to create that in a second. Finally, what we want to do is we want to say uh, style equals styles dot list view. 
we'll start doing stuff correctly and do camel case here. Let me fix data source to be uppercase S. All right, so we have our list view. Uh, now we can jump right ahead into the render row function. All right, so the render row, of course, is just going to be for um, the rows, of course. Let's go ahead and say touchable highlight on long press. Remember, this is this is the click event for a particular row. So on long press, we're going to say we're going to use one of those lambda functions again. This dot copy row, and we're going to pass it the row. Let's go ahead and close the touchable highlight. Inside of the touchable highlight, we want to have a view because we actually want to show some text. So we're going to say view style equals styles dot, we'll call it container. Doesn't really matter. Let's say close that. And we want to do a text. We'll say row. We want to show the row content here. All right, so we have both of our render functions now made. What we could do is we could start doing the actual copy logic, but uh, for me, I'd actually prefer that we do the style logic first to get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and create a new style. We'll call it list view. And we'll say background, oops, color. Let's go ahead and give it, say, F5CFF. I think that's what another background color is using. Uh, we can also remove all of this because we're not using that anymore. And let's go ahead and mess with the container. Uh, let's say uh, flex one. Padding top. Remember, this is just cosmetic stuff. It's not truly important to our final goal here. Padding bottom, 15 again. Let's say flex direction. This is actually important because this tells it uh, that it's a row. So anything, anything in this particular uh, container will be in row format. So it, it won't. Start making columns. Flex direction, let's say uh, border width is one. Uh, justify content uh, looks good. Uh, align item center. Eh. Well, we don't we don't really need either of these. We want to left align each one of our list items. So we we can just remove them. Background color. Uh, let's actually say background color is white, so that's uh, six Fs. Let's say border bottom color, and that's uh, EO EO EO. So the border color is going to be very light. I'm trying. I'm I'm not much of a, a CSS wizard myself but I am trying to get it to look somewhat like a standard list view. So let's say uh, border left color equals uh, white again. Let's go ahead and say border top color equals, hold on, I just lost myself here, sorry. All right, did I get all of all of the sides here? No, I, I think I'm missing the right, yeah. And you don't have to do all this again, it's just, just something I'm getting out of the way. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, we should be almost done here. We actually want to initialize uh, the list now with some dummy data. So we're going to say get initial state because remember we're using state again. So we've actually got to initialize it. Put a comma there so it doesn't complain. And let's say var ds equals new list view dot data source and we're going to say row has changed this is just some pretty standard uh, initialization stuff here So that looks good. And we're going to say return. And we're actually going to return the data source here. What do we call it? Data source. And we're going to say ds.clone with rows. So we're giving it some blank rows here now. Row 1, row 2. All right. With a little bit of luck, uh, we should be able to run it now, and it should at least show us a list view at this point. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. No. So unexpected token at line 24. So what do I what do I have here? It's a typo. Oh. That's it. So I put a semicolon on there. This is a this is an object, so I can't put a semicolon in there. So that should fix it now. Oh, a whole ton of new new problems here. Undefined is not an object. Data source dot row identities. So we actually had two problems. Uh, one problem is I forgot to include row. I mean we're using it here and here, but I forgot to actually include the parameter name for row. So add that in. The second problem was that um, I had a lowercase s here when it should be capital uppercase. So with that fixed, and I go to my simulator here and refresh, uh, it now shows exactly how we would anticipate it to show. So that's good. We, we can click it. It doesn't do anything yet because we don't have any logic in place. But we have a list view and with two dummy rows. So now we can go ahead and add our copy row function. So we can say copy row function, and we're passing it in a value. Uh, so value, of course. And here, let's actually use that component. So we're going to say clipboard, because that's what we named it when we when we did the require at the top. And say set, and we're going to say value. To prove that it was actually set, I'm actually going to do a, a add to the logs uh, using the get. So we're going to say clipboard dot get content console dot log. Then we're going to say uh, something like clipboard content. I'm going to say content. All right. So if I go back into my simulator here and refresh, note the logs down uh, in Xcode here. So I'm going to do a long click on row 2. And notice how it says clipboard content row 2, because that's what we're telling it to print out. So if I do that, long click on row 1, it says row 1. And that's coming from the clipboard, remember. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not just printing out the value. I'm, I'm getting it from the clipboard before we print it. So uh, ignoring the little hiccup that we had with some typos that I made, uh, it really wasn't too hard to use Clipboard. Most of the, most of the time we spent in this tutorial here, uh, we actually spent designing our list view. Uh, the Clipboard really only used two lines of code. So that's how you use the Clipboard in React Native.